screen. Uh, you guys, you guys can see it, right? Okay. Okay. So, uh, so I, I think we have uh, seen uh, machine learning and how we can use it to uh, predict, uh, like uh, to forecast the future, uh, depending on the historical data that is already provided. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm out of right, guys. Uh, just to check. Yes, you are. Okay. Okay. okay thank you. Okay. So uh, like, just to go uh, over it again, like predictive machine le learning involves like uh, you should have a historical data that's already been uh, like from the past and. Uh, you just the machine lear learning algorithm or the models will help us uh, just to find the trend of that uh, from that historical data and depending on that trend it will uh, look for it like it will try to predict the future it's not always a hundred percent but it is better so it's applied in uh, many fields like uh, the finance uh, the finance the health care the marketing, the sales, uh, and it's or uh, uh, some of the applications are like fraud detection. I think we all remember that, uh, like the incident of uh, CBE, CBE Bank, right? Yeah. So if they were using uh, ma machine learning algorithms uh, in this in their systems, whenever someone withdraws, uh, like a big amount of money or even outside of their hobbies like if someone you usually just uh, withdraws a couple of uh, thousand per week and if that person like exceeds uh, like it's spending much much more than that the much le learning algorithm can point it out right so other uh, like international banks actually i think uh, i think yeah uh, they are already implementing it, but uh, others like the, for the finance, yeah, uh, for the healthcare, most of the time, uh, you would like it's hard to find, like, uh, or to collect healthcare data, uh, like, uh, from all the people. So, what they do is just collect some and uh, just take that as a sample and predict, try to predict for the whole, like it's just a sampling technique. This also work, works for the marketing side and the sales side. Uh, so what it is, uh, what it does is it just uh, helps us to unlock uh, like valuable insights from the data. Like when we look at the data, we might not notice it on the first glance, but with this, uh, like it can find that pattern is that we cannot see, so yeah. Uh, and it helps us to be more uh, data driven, so our de decisions are uh, could bring more better outcomes. So the benefits include like uh, improved decision making, like as I have said earlier, our decisions uh, become data driven. So we're not just working in a dark room. Right, so we do have some knowledge about what's going to happen in the future, uh, like increased efficiency, uh, enhanced accuracy, like it's way much better with ML algorithms, and it's uh, like really minimal cost. So uh, it reduces cost and reduces the use of resources. Okay, so. When we come to this week's uh, project, it's for uh, like ML machine le learning used to predict the sales, right? So the importance of this is just so uh, when we think of sales, like it improves the financial planning. So we know when, like I think, where the data uh, that you were given that we provided you with. So uh, you can see the pattern, right? Uh, how people buy on a holiday, how people buy on a spiritual holiday or a normal holiday or a governmental holiday, like, right? On a Saturday, on a summer, on a winter, like, we do. You do have that kind of uh, 
information. Like you can draw some input insights from these uh, informations, from this uh, data that you are provided, right? So what uh, this helps with is just, uh, you can concentrate more your finances or your resources more on those like uh, the peak, uh, like the peak points of your sales. So on those times, you can concentrate more uh, your resources more and uh, it, this improves your financial planning and it guides your marketing strategy. If your marketing, if you apply different marketing strategies for different uh, stores, like you can find the better one. <clears throat> Sorry. And uh, it enhances the customer satisfaction and optimizes inventory levels because, uh, like, uh, your inventories will not be just uh, sitting in a warehouse you know when to order your inventories and you know when to ship them because you already have the, your forecast, right? So that's how it's going to help you. So, uh, so the process is kind of the same as uh, I think we already have had uh, uh, two sessions on uh, machine learning and we have seen two examples. So uh, just to go through them, uh, like the first thing that we did is just collect the data. So this data is already provided to you guys. So collection of historical data, customer data, and other like promotions, holidays. So these all are included in the data that we have provided you with. And uh, like you can find them from like uh, company database, CRM, and external uh, data sets. So the, the next thing you do is just clean and pre-process the data to make it ready for uh, feature engineering, right? So this is the second layer. The first one is just uh, the raw layer. So you do have the interview, like the next layer, the, uh, the primary layer. So this includes hands uh, and missing values, uh, removing duplicates, and nor normalizing the data, including uh, category can. Uh, variables. So when we say normalize, I think we have already seen, uh, like on the past, on the, uh, I think, yeah, on the past example, when uh, like the values of uh, the columns are very much apart, it could, uh, like, it could influence the result of the machine learning alg algorithm. So what we do is we normalize them uh, just to have a specific range. And encoding means like uh, if you have a, cat a category data, like a yes or no or other things, uh, encoding means just changing that to a numerical data because the ML uh, algorithm understands numbers. And then after the cleaning, uh, we select and uh, engineer the features level. So feature selection means uh, like identifying uh, the relevant features, right? So uh, the relevant features could be like, you have to do EDA before this, of course, ju just to see which, uh, like you, uh, you have to ha have an understanding of the business, like business understanding and data understanding. I think we have already seen this one. Uh, and so when you have a good understanding of your data and your uh, the business and what's expected, uh, you can easily, distinguish the features that's more important than the others and the ones that you're not going to need. So uh, this is where you select your uh, your features or the column that's uh, going to help you uh, on the ML uh, project. Or uh, like if, if you need a further, uh, like if the, features that are already available and are not enough, you can go through a uh, feature engineering, like this means creating new features or to improve the model feature and performance. So after this, uh, you just, you are going to select a model and train your model on that algorithm. Okay, so like uh, we have uh, the linear regression. Sorry, um, the decision trees, random forest, uh, like uh, gradient boosting machines, RGB, sorry, and, and uh, the neutral networks, right? 
So, uh, like the, the criteria for selection are the, for the performance. I think we can, we have already seen how we can do this uh, by using different uh, like models. We have trained and tested our uh, model and chose the the better performing one and inter interpretability and computational efficiency. So how easy it is to interpret and the computational efficiency of uh, that module. So some of the modules could take a lot of co computational pow uh, power, like the uh, the neutral network and uh, uh, like the gradient boosting machines are more uh, computational intensive than the linear regressions because the linear is just like linear, so it doesn't take that much of the computational power as compared to the others. And then, like after you selected your model, you, you're you're just going to uh, like split your data into training and test, and train the model on the training data and use uh, testing data for validation just to see how accurate your model is and how you can see uh, the accuracy is just by using more model evaluation matrices like the mean absolute error we have seen this one and the mean squared error so uh, and the roots mean squared error and r squared uh, errors so uh, this tree shows uh, how much error is available on your model. So, uh, like 10% error, like if 10% error, so like the 90% accuracy, you have your model is 90% uh, accurate, and so on. Uh, after that, you deploy your model. You can use tools like uh, Flask, Docker, or cloud services like Amazon, Azure, and so on. And then, like, uh, just retrain your model and track the performance and do the same thing over, over, uh, over and over again. So that's monitoring and maintaining the model. Uh, so uh, uh, that's the class for today, the session for today. Do you guys have any questions? It's somehow. Okay, uh, it's not maybe uh, uh, the session here is clear, but uh, what I want to ask is we we have uh, learned previously about uh, KVC and uh, KDRONA. Uh, yes. So, is there any way we can uh, utilize them for 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 this project to to uh, to improve to improve our project? Uh, that's that's what I, I want to ask. Uh, okay, so which projects are you talking about? So you want to use uh, KDRO? Yeah, this week challenge. Is there uh, a way to use KDRO or DBC uh, for for this week challenge? Of course, like you like uh, the reason that we show you is just it's a best practice uh, for like a machine learning so you have to use uh, dbc always because it's not recommended that you upload your data of course uh, like this week's data is pu uh, public data but uh, like it's not a good uh, thing to do so instead of pushing your data like it's recommended to use this dbc so you you should use it and for the kid row like uh, it's going to make it, uh, your project a lot more easier. It's going to give it a structure uh, and everything, right? If you have tried it, uh, if I if you have seen, seen it la last week, it's way much simpler than just doing it uh, on the uh, like in on the traditional way, right? So there is a way, and like okay, I didn't have time to try it for. Uh... The, the last, last week. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Like we understand. 
but I would recommend you to use it for this week. Okay, okay, okay. thank you. Okay. okay, any other questions, guys? Okay, is everything clear? If it is, um, okay. Okay. Um, okay, so it's going to be a lot, uh, like a short session. Uh, so uh, did you face any ch challenges on this week's Project or are, they, are there any questions? Uh, I think we, we can use a couple of minutes to uh, discuss more about it. Yes. So far, so good. Okay. Um, so, like, if you want to challenge yourself, like, uh, like I know it's not included in the document. Uh, but you can uh, like include your submissions and submit it on the Kaggle uh, platform and see where you stand on the uh, on the leaderboard in share. Of course, after you finish the project. So who's up for it? Like Abraham and Matthias. What about the rest? Okay, Yafsram is also in on it. So, uh, Nadia and Yudai. Uh, sorry, Cory, can you repeat what you said? I didn't get you. No, it was not a question. Like, I was just uh, saying that, uh, like, if you want to challenge, like, it's not included on the challenge document, but if you want to, st to see where you stand, like you can uh, submit your results uh, on the Kaggle platform and see like on the little board where you should stand and share it after you are done with uh, the project, of course. Okay, I'll try my best, no problem. Okay. So everyone is on it, you know, so I do remember everyone's name. So see you guys on Monday, of course, for just for the, uh, just to share it. Okay, okay. Thank you guys so much.